in the Gospel of St. Luke, the 10th chapter, right around verse 25, you see something that reads as such. Just then a lawyer stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he said, what must I do to inherit eternal life? He said to him, what is written in the law? What do you read there? He answered, you shall love the Lord your God with all of your heart and with all of your soul, with all of your strength and with all of your mind and your neighbor as yourself. And he said to him, you have given the right answer. Do this and you will live. But wanting to justify himself, he asked Jesus, and who is my neighbor? Jesus replied, a man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell into the hands of robbers who stripped him beat him and went away, leaving him half dead. Now by chance, a priest who was going down that road, when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. So likewise, a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. The Samaritan, but a Samaritan, while traveling, came near him. And when he saw him, he was moved with pity. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, having poured oil and wine on them. Then he put him on his own animal, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. The next day, he took out two denarii, gave them to the innkeeper, and said, take care of him, and when I come back, I will repay you whatever more you spend. Which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of the robbers? He said, the one who showed him mercy. Jesus said to him, go and do likewise. The word of the Lord. Please pray with me. Eternal and mighty God, we sit at your feet, listening to your voice to touch us, to change us. Lord, let our ears hear, but also, Lord, let our hearts, our minds, our souls, and our bodies respond to this world. To this word let us not leave here the same way that we came in and Lord most importantly let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in the one and only place where it counts the most that is in thy sight O Lord for you are my strength and my Redeemer in Jesus precious name we pray amen I'm an interactive kind of preacher, so I look forward to hearing you say amen. Hey! See, because when I hear silence, I get the feeling that perhaps you didn't hear or understand, so then I tend to repeat myself, and the service goes a little longer. But if I hear laughter, or chuckle, or amen, or go on preacher from time to time? Oh, yeah. All right, let's have our benediction and go home. <laughs> no, 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 don't even release your faith. I'm gonna keep you longer than that. In Micah, the prophet, about 750 years before the birth of Christ, is preaching, prophesying to Israel. And he's laying this out in the way of, of a courtroom. He's making an argument on behalf of God. 
Because God is asking the question, what have I done, Israel, for you to become tired of me? What have I done as I've brought you out of Egypt? As I gave you bread and water and provided for you, I defended you against armies and enemies. And yet, your hearts continue to turn away. And Israel responds by saying, well, well, what can we do to fix this? Shall we give you more rams? We have hundreds, thousands of rams. Uh, what about oil? you like, oh, can, can we give you more oil? And God says, knock it off with the rams and the oil. <laughs> it's not about your so-called worshiping. That's important. God longs for our fellowship. God longs to just sit down and to be in each other's presence. So it's about, yes, it's, it's, it's about worship, but it's about what you do to your neighbor. It's about relationship. It's about love. He said for us to show mercy, to show kindness. I want to share with you for just a few minutes this morning. I won't keep it long. I want to share with you about how important it is to be kind. To be nice. As we start this journey together, this season, as you prepare, my job as interim is to, to give you breathing room, to allow you to breathe and to relax. You've had transitions in your journey, pastors, have, have moved on. Let's, let, let, how many of you know that, that we are caught off guard, but God is never caught off guard by anything. God knows what's about to happen. He knows also what God has prepared for you. There are great things that await you. My role is to give you encouragement, to remind you that God is still flying this aircraft. If anybody else is flying this aircraft, grab your parachutes and follow me. <laughs> but as long as God is in the pilot seat, turn to your neighbor and give them a big smile. Show them all of your, your 32s, your 27s, your 21s, your 14s, whatever you got left. Tell them everything's going to be all right. Everything is going to be all right. So there's no reason for us not to be kind to one another. There's no reason for us not to show love. and In fact, if we say that we love one another, this is important, the kindness, the mercy, the humility, all validate the words of love that come out of our mouths. This is what Micah is saying to the Israelites, that you must humble yourself and show mercy, show kindness. The story is further exemplified in Jesus' parable of a, of a good Samaritan who responds when other church folk, religious folk, this message, these passages aren't for the outsiders or, or for the folks that are outside of the church that, that aren't paying God any mind one way or the other. This message is for church folk, religious folk. How many of you know we could spend a lifetime in the church singing in choirs, you sang beautifully, by the way, playing pianos and organs and music. You could be ushers. You could sit on section. By the way, side note, how many of you know that once an elder, always an elder? How many elders, former elders, are in the congregation? Raise your hand. Ooh, yeah. Hey, I was talking with folks, and I say, yeah, we, we need people to help. Well, yeah, we're kind of short, short in something. I said, well, we have elders who have gone on. I said, yeah. I said, oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring that up again. You can serve in the church all of your life as an elder, as an officer. You can be involved with staff, music, grounds. You can do all. You can be out doing all sorts of things for the church and still miss God. How does that happen? How does that happen? It happens when we fail to truly fellowship and understand the love of God and then take that love 
and translate it into action, particularly with our neighbors. There's need for kindness in today's vitriolic, abusive environment that we live and watch on TV every day. The need for mercy, to forgive, to have compassion, to just smile at people. Linda and I were, we weren't really surprised, but yet we were surprised when we came to worship for the first time last week and people just walked up to us. They came down and... <laughs> I said to myself, what? I said, wow, what a warm, friendly bunch. People appreciate when you see them. Yes. Kindness. And to be the first one to say good morning when you walk in the door. This is important for every Christian, especially in this age. So I say to you, as we start our journey, I hope the camera's able to follow me because I... <laughs> I like, to, I like to move around a little bit. <laughs> In this day and age, it is important to take a moment to be kind. I appreciate the work of my predecessor. Shannon did a wonderful job. Amen? In a short period of time. Short period of time. Now, I have, I've had four pastorates prior to this season of interim leadership. And in most of those pastorates, when I arrived, my predecessor seemed to have left in rather a big hurry. How do I know that when I come into the office, they left everything behind? Valuable stuff. This time when I came in, the office was absolutely spotless. And they had the annual report nicely laid in the basket. <laughs> and a list of all the congregants. Thank you, dear woman. Thank you for the work and setting the tone of joy and compassion and love for the short time that you were here. May God bless you along your journey. Let me make my point and then I'll be finished. It is important in this day and age that we validate the words of love that we say from our mouth with actions of compassion and mercy. Forgiveness, back to the basics. And I'll hit these points over and over and over and over as we walk through this season together because you can't preach it enough. If I preached it every Sunday for 52 Sundays out of a year, it still wouldn't be enough. It is important that we act out, that we validate the love with acts of kindness. Why? Because there are mean people out there and there are mean people in the church. There are mean folk, there are probably mean, they're, they're probably sitting in here right now. Don't look at them. <laughs> Don't look, they see you looking, then they'll know that you know. <laughs> but they show up at church, and they don't say good morning. They don't acknowledge you, that, that, they don't, that you don't exist. And sisters and brothers, this is important as we start this journey. The first sermon that I preach, and the, the first of many, I hope, I don't know, I could come in one morning and my knuckle pop when I try to open the door. But the first sermon of many is about love and kindness and mercy and how important it is that we treat each other well. The man was going down a path, history says that that, that that path going down that the Jewish person, the victim was going is a long downward winding road and lots of bandits and thieves hide out in corners and they assaulted him and it was religious folk. I heard a story about a woman whose car broke down after she left church service. She was about a quarter of a mile out and she saw church members going by and she waved and they all zipped right on by. They thought that she was just waving to be friendly. 
her, her hood was up and she was in distress and no one from the church stopped. They just kept right, they rolled the window down. Do you need a cell phone? Can I help you? Just kept on going. All the church that she was in the sanctuary worshiping with. You know who stops? This big, heavy set guy riding a Harley. Beard all the way down. He's got rubber bands around the bottom part of his beard. He has not one, not three, but about seven holes in each ear. He's got his headband on, his sunglasses on, and necklaces, and he's riding down on his, he riding around on his hog. I know I got some Harley folk out here. Couldn't kill it. Couldn't keep silent. Yeah! And he stops and he assists the woman. Sometimes the people that ignore you are the ones that wear the red ties and the blue jackets. Or the pretty red, pretty red dress. Lovely red. Oh, by the way, if you have a red dress, I'm not talking about you. <laughs> Just make that clear. Sometimes it's us who miss out on the opportunities to be a blessing to others. And this year, this election year, because regardless of who wins, Regardless of who wins, I got a, a, a thing in my spirit where it's just going to be ugly out there. It's going to be dark. And people will start to say and, and do things that are just nasty. The last election I was pastoring in, in Texas, in West Texas. And, you know, I'll give myself away here. I had my, I had my Biden-Harris placard out in front of my yard. And somebody came, and I had my Baltimore Ravens flag. <laughs> Better ask somebody. I had my flag out there. They came and spray painted my Harris flag. And I said, oh, yeah, oh. So I went and got on my computer and typed up a, a sign and then put it right there underneath because I know, you know, the per criminal always come back to his act. So I put underneath there, you are already forgiven. <laughs> and I left it out there. And people drove by and they saw the sign all painted up. Then they saw the sign and says, he already forgiven. Wow. But I wasn't upset about that. I was upset at the fact that they stole my Raven's flag. <laughs> I, I could care less about you painting up the sign. Ah, political folk. But you stole my Baltimore Ravens flag. Now I got to say the confession of the prayer of confession for 20 more seconds on Sunday. <laughs> you know, in this season where things are so vitriolic and nasty, don't forget that you are a child of God, a woman of God, a man of God. And we care about people. We are kind even when others are not. Don't let the news and the, the atmosphere around us cause us to forget to show compassion and love. It is necessary. It is a clarion call. And when you see people acting nasty, if you see leaders that aren't compassionate or merciful, don't complain, vote. When you see folks not doing what they're supposed to do in public office, don't get mad. Don't talk about the mayor. Don't talk about DPW. Don't talk about the, the elector. Don't complain. Vote. Tell your children, vote. My name is Ron Hankins, and I approve this message. <laughs> in conclusion, it was the good Samaritan, not the church folk, but the so-called outsider that took the time to go the extra mile. Sometimes validating our love means going the extra mile. Sometimes validating the words of love that we confess means taking the time to do a little bit extra, to show mercy, to be compassionate, to forgive. Come on, it's time to let it go. It was 1952, for heaven's sakes. Forget about it. We hold things for years and years and years, and siblings aren't talking to each other. Mothers aren't talking to their children. Children not talking to their parents. The word of God not suggest, 
but commands that we be kind, to be sensitive to one another. And we're a Matthew 25 church, are we not? That means there's three things we must always be mindful of. You must always, always be ready and prepared. The foolish virgins. Always keep your lamps filled, present with the Holy Spirit in our hearts. We must also take care of the resources, the five talents. Take care of those resources that God has blessed us with, the church, the, each other, the earth to be good stewards of our resources. But the last one, and most importantly, is to be in right relationship with one another, the sheep and the goats. It wasn't what folks did, but it's what we didn't do, failed to do. We missed out on the opportunity to give our humanity a lift up. Let that be our objective each and every day of our lives. God's going to give you a pop quiz. Not tomorrow. I'm willing to bet it happens today. Before you get out to your car, somebody may challenge you. And God is watching our response. Why? Because it's all about kindness and mercy. Kindness and mercy matters. The peace of the Lord be with you all.